This game blows. No. Yeah, Sonic Adventure 2. The game was good until the internet declared it wasn't around mid-2010. But that's why I'm here now. Is it worth the hype? Is it worth the hate? Well, it's time to find out. But first, if you like what you see, why don't you hit like? And if you end up being a fan of my stuff, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and it helps support me and my channel. Alrighty, so what's all the hype about? Sonic Adventure 2 released in 2001 for the Dreamcast, and later that same year for the GameCube. As the title suggests, it is a sequel to the groundbreaking Sonic Adventure, which also got a re-release on the GameCube. Being Sonic's second foray into 3D, well, technically third, but we don't, we don't, we don't really talk about that one. This game blows almost everything Sonic Adventure 1 did out of the water. So many improvements, the three years between these two games' releases really shows. The gameplay has been refined to be even sharper than before. Even now, it stands up on its own as a great Sonic game. One of my favorites, in fact. The roster has also been trimmed down. What? But, but it's still... it's still got six characters. Well, yes and no. It took the six game styles of SA1 and trimmed them down to three. Instead of having several unpolished game styles, we now have two sets of three polished game styles split between light and dark. Sonic's speedy style is even better than it was in Sonic Adventure 1, and it is given to Sonic and Shadow. The gameplay, as mentioned before, is tight and crisp, and not only that, but the level design is absolutely amazing. Each location is distinct, and after all these years, the levels are still burned into my brain, dude. Knuckles' treasure hunting is now split between Knuckles and the newcomer, Rouge the Bat. While I do wish the Mash Emerald radar would be able to locate things out of order, the map design and unique uses of radars, like looking for keys, does definitely have its perks. Lastly, E-102 Gamma's shooting style has been expanded and given to Tails and Eggman. This one has had the biggest improvement in the fact that instead of getting the sloppy seconds of characters' stages, these levels are custom made for the mechs. The final major improvement, in my opinion, are the bosses, actually. Each and every boss encounter is rad, and they all have an identity of their own. Instead of being different forms of the same beast, and oh, Knuckles, no. there's a variety of bosses from different gun mechs, to character battles, to the crazy final boss in space. So, on the basis of being a sequel, the game really is worth the hype. How about on its own? Yes, yes it is. Look, I'll be the first to admit it's not perfect, but man, the high points are truly unforgettable. Looking back now, the story is pretty silly. For the time, it was an exciting, enticing direction for Sonic to be taken in. But I mean, looking at it now? Like, dude, he has to go to space to save the planet, that's kinda sick! But it's so stupid! As a side note, compared to the original release, the cutscenes have been completely botched, actually. And there is a spectacular YouTube video, which I will have a link in the description below to check out, that compares the original release's cutscenes and the GameCube release's cutscenes. However, they're still serviceable. If you happen to emulate, then boom! There are plenty of fan-made efforts that try to restore these cutscenes to their former beauty. Back to the gameplay and how it stacks up by itself, the speedy sections are by far my favorite and are universally praised. Without a boost, the freedom of speed and expression in how you complete the levels is out of this world and absolutely holds up to this day. City Escape still remains as one of the most iconic 3D Sonic levels with one of the most iconic songs. The pacing of City Escape starts simple. It builds on the controls, adds complexity at risk, and then it comes to a climax with a chase. And oh man, it is perfect. It is pure bliss and pure joy. And that's just the first level. Most, if not every level afterwards, remain at this level of spectacle. Metal Harbor, for example, has fast-paced, action-packed platforming from area to area and ends with a race to catch up with a rocket launch. Green Forest has you race to the finish before the island blows up. up! And those are just the starting three levels. I could go on, but we'd be here for at least like another 30 minutes. The treasure hunting levels are definitely the weakest in my opinion, and as a kid I never liked them. Coming back to it now, I think they're just okay. You need to find three shards of the Master Emerald, but the problem is, in the original game, the radar works so that if you're just close by an emerald, you could get it. However, in Sonic Adventure 2, it's linear, and even if you're right next to an emerald, if it's not the first on your radar, it won't come up. That is the biggest flaw with this mode, in my opinion. Some of the levels are well designed, and others leave a lot to be desired. 
And also, having to collect these shards in order, it necessitates a lot of unnecessary backtracking. But all around, it is still a serviceable game mode. Finally, the gunner segments. I genuinely really, really like these. These make you feel like you're playing those classic arcade shooters. The gameplay is simple and it makes you feel great. You just hold down the button, lock down on your enemies, and blast, blast away. away. It keeps it simple, and I appreciate that. The levels are linear, but they don't need to be anything other than that. After all, you're just running and gunning through the stages. It's definitely not a bad thing. The game all around just gets you from point A through point B using a dorky but enjoyable story, as well as some of the tightest Sonic gameplay, while the speed stages are definitely the main draw. And while this game, paired alongside SA1, can be seen as Sonic losing focus on what people love, being the speed, I believe that the varied gameplay is a strong suit of the game that offers a fun change of pace. Oh, and one more thing, the Chow Garden. No one talks shit about this mode. It's fire, dude. And if you don't believe me, watch this hour-long video Cybershell made on it. For being an optional piece of side content, the Chow Garden has some of the most in-depth and fun mechanics. I have lost hours and hours to raising the perfect child. So in conclusion, that's Sonic Adventure 2. And while in no means being the perfect game, it's a pretty good game still, even after all these years. And it doesn't need to be perfect, it's Sonic Adventure 2. It's a silly little game about silly little hedgehogs going into space. And in that little adventure comes some of the most refined and fun gameplay I've ever had. If you want to hate it, hate it. But I'd say to give the game a chance and to just look at it for what it is and not what it should be.